In this video, we'll take a look at the website for Backbone.js. Now, everything I do in this lesson, you can do on your own. So if you're feeling especially brave, pause the video right now and explore the site on your own. And remember that we're just looking for a high level picture of Backbone. We're not trying to get into the nitty gritty. This page here, backbonejs.org, is actually the documentation for Backbone. Now we're gonna look through this page and try and get an idea of what exactly Backbone is and roughly how we can use it from a high level perspective. The first paragraph bolds a couple words, models, collections, and views. So we can infer that the models are our data and collections are collections of models. In our original model view octopus paradigm, we just had normal arrays. In our model view view model paradigm with knockout, we had observable arrays. In Backbone, they're called collections. And we also have views with declarative event handling. We'll get an idea of what that is in just a moment. Let's scroll down a little bit and just skim through the introduction section. The first paragraph says, when working on a web application that involves a lot of JavaScript, one of the first things you can do is to stop tying your data to the DOM. It's all too easy to create JavaScript applications that end up as tangled piles of jQuery selectors and callbacks, all trying frantically to keep data in sync between the HTML UI, your JavaScript logic, and in some cases, not our case, the database on the server. So this sounds very familiar. This is what lesson one was about, writing a spaghetti code application and figuring out, eh, you know, maybe it's not good enough. The second paragraph says, with Backbone, you represent your data as models, which can be created, validated, destroyed, and saved to the server, if you have a server. Now here's the fun part. Whenever a UI action causes an attribute of a model to change, the model triggers a change event. All of the views that display the model's state can be notified of that change, so they're able to respond accordingly, re-rendering themselves with new information. This also sounds familiar. This sounds exactly like what Knockout was doing, keeping track of the way things are connected so that way it can selectively re-render different parts of the view when the model changes. In a finished Backbone app, you don't have to write the glue code or the octopus code, or at least a lot of it, that looks into the DOM to find the element with a specific ID and update the HTML manually. Instead, when a model changes, the views update themselves on their own. Now I'm gonna stop here. At a very high level, it's basically the exact same thing as we've done before, keeping our concerns generally separated from each other. Now, if you look around on the web, you'll find all kinds of shaky statements about what Backbone is. It's not Model View Controller, MVC. If we look on Wikipedia, we'll find that Backbone.js, it says, is based on the Model View Presenter and the Actor Model Application Design Paradigm. So we're not gonna talk about the second part, but if you read the rest of the Wikipedia article, at least as of now when I'm recording this lesson, it doesn't mention MVP ever again. Now this guy named Adi Asmani, who's a developer who really understands this stuff and who wrote the code we're going to be modifying, wrote a blog post about this, understanding MVC and MVP for JavaScript and Backbone developers. This sounds like a wonderful article for us, Unfortunately, it's really, really long, so I'm not gonna go over it right now with you. But I would like to point out one particular area of it. About halfway down, he says, in this respect, contrary to what might be mentioned in the official documentation or in blog posts, Backbone is neither a truly MVC MVP nor MVVM framework. It's in fact better to consider it a member of the MV asterisk family, which approaches architecture in its own way. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's important to distinguish between classical MVC and MV asterisk. Should you be relying on advice from classical literature on the former to help with the latter? In other words, what he's really saying is Backbone doesn't exactly follow the MVC model view controller or model view presenter or model view view model paradigms. Backbone kind of does things a little bit differently. So now we know a couple things. Definitions like MVC and MVP and MVVM are not the be all end all. We also know that MV asterisk means patterns that do it differently from our traditional patterns. And to make things stranger, if you read a little bit more between the lines, you'll find that Backbone is pretty agnostic about how you organize the communication between the different parts of your application. So what we're going to do is we're going to rely on the code that we're editing to dictate how things are done. And we're gonna check out the documentation when we need help or when things don't work. So it may seem strange to say, 
but in order to make a few changes to a particular project, sometimes you don't have to understand it fully. It's important that we remember we're looking for a general organizational picture here, not a super detailed one. We aren't going to learn Backbone.js really, really well. All of this documentation is here to help us, but we're not going to understand what every single piece does. If we had to learn a library 100% before we could make any changes, that would be impractical and unsustainable. Let's take a step back from all of this and talk to Jacques, one of our front end developers, about strategies that we can use to start adding to a project without the code that we add sticking out like a sore thumb. 